I get lots of requests from you asking me how do I paint this or how do I paint that. Well, you might notice that if you ask me how to paint something, uh, I'm not going to show you a formula, but I want to teach you how to observe and think. And this viewer asks, um, how do I paint uh, a lake with ripples and dazzling reflections of light, lots of dazzling reflections, and a rel relatively dark water, not transparent waters? Well, I'm going to teach you a little principle about how to observe and to accomplish just that kind of thing. As I always say, it's about observation. That's where you begin when you're painting any subject. So if we look at this subject, now this is just a tiny example of many, many, many variations that you might see of uh, a dark water. And usually a dark water is either, uh, is probably in some kind of shadow or the, the light is shining in a way that is going to appear dark. There might be many reasons for the water itself to be dark. If the water is moving, such as we see in this lake scene here, the reflection is going to be broken up. So you've got to observe two things. One, what's reflecting in the water? What's causing the, what's causing the, the reflection or causing the thing that you're seeing? And two, what is the value of that and what are those colors that you're looking at? Now let's just look at this analytically and let's look at what we're seeing here. We're obviously seeing the sky reflecting in the water, in these blue areas in here. Over here you can see that there is more light, but this part is obviously in some kind of shadow. So in the blue part we'll see the sky reflecting in the water, but we see also the, the orange of the bank area, we can see that reflecting in the water, and we can see something of the green trees reflecting in the water. The way the water is breaking up though, what we're seeing most of in this particular scene are the blues and the oranges. So what do we do about that? One thing, when the sky is reflecting in the water and the water is very dark, that sky has got to be changed and put into a different value because the blue that you see here is much darker than the blue you see here. So you come up first of all with the blue of the sky. Now, you don't use just the blue of the sky that you're looking at, but you use of the, blue, the blue of the sky that you mix. So here I have mixed ultramarine blue. I've taken a, ultramarine, a pile of ultramarine blue and added into it just a little bit of viridian so I can tilt that ultramarine blue a little bit more towards what we see as cerulean. This color is more like this. Well, actually, if I, if I go for the value of the sky, it's more like this. Let's get that even lighter. It's more like this. So you can see, this is really the color of the sky that I'm looking at. But that color gets very much darker when it reflects in the water. So that's the first thing to observe. What is the color of the sky? And then, what is the value of that color as it's reflecting in the water? So, if I take this color then, uh, and I go backwards and find the value, I'll find, let's just see right here. We can do that by taking a piece of paper, as I normally will do when I'm doing uh, something like this. And when I'm trying to find the value and the color, I'll put, um, I'll put some paint on the paper. And I'll just, now here I'm just looking for blue. Am I in the right value range? That's pretty close. You can see how much darker, right here I'm going to put it, you see how much darker this is than this. But that's the dark of the blue or something in that value range that I need for that sky reflecting in the water. Alright, so I, if I settle on that, then notice also, even though this orange color, or orangish color, all these orangey colors, even though we see them very much lighter here, they're very much darker here. And if you look here, if you squint, you squint, you see that pretty much all is one value. That tells me that orange needs to be the same or a similar value as the blue. Now that's the key. Finding those colors that you see reflected, no matter what they are, and they'll be different from this. 
but you find those colors that are reflected and you adjust them to a very close value relationship. So let's see how we would do that. So in this case, now if you did the previous quick tips, uh, the, the, one, the six, set of six where I took scientifically um, analyze how, um, how we can control the values and, and the intentions of colors, you will get a real clue there as to how to do this. But just taking it raw as if you haven't seen that, we, can, we would call this a yellow-orange. So we begin with a yellow-orange, and I'll just put that right here, like that. But if I take that yellow-orange and hold it up here, you can see it's very much lighter than this, and it won't work. It won't look right if I use this yellow-orange. So I've got to change that value to be more of the value that I'm looking at. And then when I look at this in terms of what color I'm really seeing, the yellow orange actually changes to a darker version of itself. So I'm going to use the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red, which is actually a red orange. I'm going to put a little bit of that right here. Now I'm going to mix until I can find the same value or similar, similar value range as the orange I'm looking at there. Let's get a good bit of that because we're going to need more than I might think. So right in here, now if I hold this right here and squint, I see I'm pretty close, pretty close to that same value range. Do I need to get it a little darker? Well, closer to us, we don't see quite so much of that, but what we do see is darker and it gradually gets just a little bit lighter as it goes in closer to the bank. So we might need a variation. This will be true of any color that you're mixing, um, especially if, you're, if you can see a bank that's reflecting into the water itself. So let's see, did I get, have I got that? That's pretty much, pretty much the same value. If I put these side by side right here, that's very close. If you squint, now of course the, the uh, warmer colors, this is warmer, the orange, of course, is warmer than blue. But the warmer colors are going to feel lighter in value, but when you squint at them, you'll see them merge, and you'll feel like they're in the same value range. So adjusting your colors and getting your colors right in the beginning is the first step. Um, now, when you paint your sky in, you use the same color, as I said before. Whatever color you use for your sky, that's the, the darker a version of that is going to be reflected here. So if you happen to paint your sky and you realize that the color that you use is maybe a little different from the sky you're looking at, you don't look here, but you get the darker version of the actual color that you use in order for it to read correctly. So there's the first step. <clears throat> then the second step is to look at the pattern of movement in the water. Now if you watch the Van Gogh quick tip, where we the one called Van, How Van Gogh Sees Seas or something like that. Um, you will notice that uh, one thing that made that work, made his work uh, appealing, is that he was observing the direction of the movement of the water. So what do we see here in terms of that? The direction, we see that uh, we can look at just the oranges themselves and we can see that they are moving, the direction they're moving in is is this direction right here sort of a a diagonal direction that um, that would vanish to a vanishing point if we had it way over there. So we might just make a little bit of a note uh, uh, that we could we actually could do that with pencil, uh, but I'll do it with a brush here. Now, so I'm, we make a little bit of I want that diagonal direction. So I've got this one moving like this. The uh, the one the one above it moves a little bit more or uh, less of a slant. And then we see in the back there that it all straightens out. It's hard, more horizontal. So we see it's horizontal. The movement, the movement of the water is horizontal, closer to the bank. And as it gets to closer to where we are, we can see that moving, that movement getting a little bit more of a tilt, and even a little bit more of a tilt. So that's the movement. Now what do we do? Well, you could. It, it, it doesn't matter whether you put put the blue in first or whether you put the orange in first. So <clears throat> I'm going to go in for the blue first, and I'll show you what we got here. I'm going in for the very dark blue, and that would be uh, closer here. And I'm just going to do a, a, a small section just to show you how to approach this. All right, I'm going to use this type of a stroke to, to scrub that blue in. 
Now this is sort of a zigzag because this is the way the water is moving. Where I'm holding the brush horizontal like that, but I'm moving it diagonal. So I'm moving the, the movement is horizontal, but the direction is diagonal. Direction means that the path I'm taking with the brush is moving like this. The, the angle I'm holding the brush is more like this. Now that's a technical thing, but that's something that if you can learn to do it can, can go a long, long way towards helping you define, to define lots of things that would have that kind of movement. So I'm going by the amount of blue that I see here. And I'll just start right there and uh, let's just kind of even this out right down here just to just to uh, make it feel a little bit more, give it a little bit more closure. Notice how as this blue moves up, we see less and less of it. And so, I, I, once again, I hold the brush, hold the brush so that it is angled horizontal, but I'm moving it diagonally. And I'm moving back and forth. I just use that back and forth movement to help create that movement, uh, the feeling of movement within that wire. As it goes, and you see, then it's getting, it's getting the the sky is getting less and less as we go go upward. So a little less here, and then I'm going to give some little a little bit of variation to that blue. I'm seeing a little bit of variation in the value there, so I'll pull, I'll kind of double load the brush with a, a light, slot, slightly lighter blue as we move up. And now here I'm going to need less of that. So once again, same stroke same way of moving the brush but less and less of the blue now as it gets right up in here we see even less of that blue and so we just don't need very much at all same same movement of the brush but notice that here the brush is moving the direction of the movement the path that it's taken is more horizontal and it gradually begin, it takes on a stronger and stronger diagonal as it comes down. So that's a good way to block in the dark. Now we'll go in for the orange, um, the reflection that we see. So I'm going to get all that blue rinsed out of the brush really, really good. All right. So I'll start out with that darker orange. Got to have it, uh, got to have it within the same value range as as the blue. Now see. Let's put, yeah, okay, that's going to work. So um, now we see that darker orange. In some cases it's blending in with the blue and I'm using the same movement. The same movement where where the, the brush is moving back and forth but it's angled horizontally and yet the path of movement is taking on that diagonal. And we can see that it's actually blending. Where we see it getting really, really darker, that's where the two colors sort of blend together. Then we'll show the orange, uh, show the orange by itself, right here in this little section. So, we, and move now as I move it back and forth, I'm blending it in with that blue, slightly, but holding that brush, holding that brush, continuing to hold that brush horizontal as I take that movement. All right. Now in the front, you can see we don't see that much. It just it's just sort of a feeling more than it is uh, defined. Let's get some more paper towel here. And then as it goes up, we see just a little bit more of it. A little bit more of the orange as we go up. We see a little especially right in here popping in. But you know that blue and orange are complements, and so it's, in this case, they're sort of going to emphasize each other as they move up. All right, now you see as it gets higher, we see more of the orange. Same thing, holding that brush, keeping that value close, and holding that, holding that brush in that same diagonal movement. Now, as it picks up the or it picks up the blue here, I pull it off the brush, and I reload it with the orange because we need more, more of the orange showing right up in here. And then as it gets closer to the bank, we need more of that orange showing. And then get closer and closer to the bank. We see more and more of the orange. Now this is the block in stage. Alright, now we'll go back to the blue.
And what I'm going to do with the blue this time is I'm going to load the brush with the blue and then a little bit of the orange. Let's see, now we'll begin to kind of... Okay, that's too dark. You can really watch the value here because in the distance it grows a little lighter. Right up in here. That's better. That's better. Just don't need very much of that blue popping out at all. Just a little bit of it. And then as it gets closer to us in here, we just have those sort of weaving into each other, the blue and the orange. And as we get closer in here, we begin to see a little bit of a lighter light. So we'll add that, just a little bit of the lighter light as we move down. I'm going to pull a little bit more of that, um, the, uh, the red, the red orange into that. Because at this stage, we're, we're sort of blending the two together. Okay, so I need a little bit more of the blue in here. Get that blue a little bit darker and a little bit lighter. Let it vary in value. But at the same time, holding that brush the same. A little bit darker right in here. A little bit darker right in here. Keeping that brush moving in that same pattern. And see as it goes up, it begins to sort of get a little bit lighter. Okay, let's get just a little bit duller as it goes up right up in here. Just a little bit duller. Get those sort of a little bit more blended together because our vision is really blending them together. All right, that's beginning, that's beginning to work now. Now, as final touches, uh, when we squint, we can see a little bit of light uh, in this area of the orange. You see a little bit of light catching. So we might throw a little bit of light, a little bit of light here and there where we see it, uh, where a, a, a ripple might be popping up and picking up a piece of light. Just not much though. And then in the distance, get a little bit of white on here. And then in the distance, we'll see something of the same thing. So you can add a little bit of white for what we see in the distance there. Just a little bit of, of uh, white where those ripples will be popping up and catching light. All right, now we can do just a, a similar thing with the blue, and and uh, this will be well, just kind of a rough little example for you of how you can handle the handle the color and the value when you're doing the water. Um, the the as the water as the ripples um, roll towards the the light, they're going to catch a little bit more light, so you can see a little bit more variation. So we move for the light right in here. Let's check that out. Yeah, a little bit there. So you can you might see a little bit of light in the blue right in here. And you might see a little bit of light in the blue like right in here. Um, you might see a little bit more light in the blue as you go up like right here. And you might even see uh, a little light blue popping out in here. I'm going to pull just a little bit more of this light in here. But you save that light for the very, very last because in the very dark water you won't really see it. So what do we see happening here? A little bit more sky popping through right in there, maybe. Okay, but perhaps that is probably perhaps that's enough to show you an approach that you can take to show just exactly what the viewer was asking for. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including 
full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.